Okay, Stinky. You got it under control, don't you? All right, so this deer, we're going to turn it into pretty much jerky. So every time we butcher deer, we bring it home. I rarely cut it up out in the field because I don't need to. I'll drag it or I'll put it on the cart and just bring it home. And I always hang mine from the back legs. That's just how I've done it. I know some people do it differently, but I'm not changing my ways. And this is how I always do it. Hang them up. I put a beam across the garage rafters up there, the joists, and made them eye bolts so I could hook my hangers up to. Did you tell the people that the, the front the legs are only attached by muscles and no bones? How about you video it and I'll cut them off and everybody can see, okay? Okay. We'll get back at you. I've already done this other front leg, but I'll show you just that that line right there, hairline. Just come in there nice and easy. Have you a sharp knife. You can run right down that down that line almost all the way to the joint. grinding all of it you could go fast and like all this you hack it in some of you might say that don't look neat which really it don't matter does it Vespa? yeah because we know what we're saving and we're gonna grind all of it so it's gonna go through a grinder so it doesn't even matter just to throw that out there get around them front legs and you start taking it down. This ain't no cape job to for a mount. We're just getting it off here so we can do a skull mount for Vespers. First little buck. Yeah. Ain't we, Stinky? Yeah. I could pull the rope and hoist the deer up a little bit higher and make this easier. I figured I'd just not do that. Get down here on the cold floor. Way easier that way. Oh, there's his tongue. <laughs> just a hack, hack job for caping. I'm just gonna cut in back there. I just take the trusty saws all. I know you can find the vertebrae and snap it, but let blood fly. There. Tell me how hard was it to pull that trigger? Not hard at all. In the field though, you have to do it. Find that vertebrae and get in there and snap it. This is something I do. Before you guys start cutting meat off, after you skin them, especially late season deer, they're pretty hairy. Just run around there and singe off all that meat for the, the hair. Yeah, the hair. Don't take much. Oh, there's hair flying, ain't there? Yeah. All right. Front leg. You gotta get this. You just start jerking on them. You see where it'll separate? Just take your knife and run it around there. If you've never done it before. Anybody <laughs> can do this and figure it out. It's so simple. I always come over here, set it on my bucket, and cut right around there. Get the old saws off. And that's it.
do it in the luxury of the garage. There's a spine. For those of you who have never done this, you can see the spine. Stick your knife in there and find the edge of it. Run your knife down. Go down the other side of it. And just come across right about there. Come down the ribs. Come down the ribs. And then, while it's hanging, get that skin started to eliminate a step on the butchering table. So you can do a little bit of a meat prep there. Put it in the scrap bucket. There's a big old freaking strap right there, Stink. Hey, hey while you're sleeping, I'm going to eat that, okay? No, that's the best part. It is. Perfect back strap. Some nice straps, ain't they? That and I always come in, carefully start them at the top. Carefully. You can either carve them out that way, or you can come right in here and follow the ribs down. But since I got this started right here like this, I'll just carve it out like this, following the rib cage. Try not to leave any meat on the deer. Because the back straps are really good. Probably the most thing. They're not the most tastiest thing with on the deer. Get them down. The oh. back legs off. What we did with off my deer. There's a big old strap. Those are your inner loins. You can come up here like this. Cut that crap off of there. Just and look, come right down that inner inner loin. Now normally, I'll take these out as soon as we hang the deer up, but I, I didn't. I didn't this time. But that's okay. We can still we can still get it. Okay. It don't take much to get these out. My little skull. There's an inner loin. Super tender. I'll come back and get the rest of the stuff. We'll probably cut off some meat here on the neck, but I'm just going to show you how I break down the rest of it. And it's freaking easy, dude. Right there. Done. Done. Right down. already cut off the leg tag and I got a bucket. I've saved every tag from way back. I can't even tell you. I got so many tags because you want to save that stuff in case Mr. Conservation Guy wants to come check up on you. Take that back leg. Just cut what meat might be hanging on to it. Take your saws off. That's it. Normally I do these last, but my favorite thing to use is a fillet knife. Cutting up the deer and everything, because it, I mean, it bends, you know, thin blades can get them super sharp. So normally I'll just square the end of that back strap up. We're gonna grind that. Cut off any excess crap you don't want on there and I'll always take this thing for packaging purposes and I'll cut it in half then look and this one ain't really too bad for uh, 
along that edge there's like a flap attached to that strap but you can dress your strap up then you can go back and you can grind all that that's what we always do even if there's some of that that white fat and all, all that stuff on there we're making jerky out of it and I've never had a problem with it being gamey or whatever I've been doing this forever so you butcher it however you want to butcher it you just want to keep your meat clean and cool that's the main thing now look you want to take off that silver skin piece that's what this is when I like this flop that sucker over bend your fillet knife and you do the one side come in on that other side just cleans it up nice and then look at this excess so you got just a little bit you can come back through there and buzz it off that way you're not wasteful with the backstrap meat look at that hard to do with a with a with a stiff bladed knife so here's the same thing come over here and get in on this one up close there's that silver skin piece remember you can take a little bit of meat but see you can see that knife poking through there flop it over just like you're filleting a fish if you ever fillet a fish then come back there it is you got a little extra here no waste we'll come back and get that this just makes it easier and faster for me I like the fillet knives and old Mr. Possum or whoever gets to it first is going to appreciate all these scraps I always take my scrap bucket like Vesper yelled at me for <laughs> take it and just throw it by me ready for the back leg I'll whip out this stiff bladed knife it's just a cheap one nothing real good but I'll keep it sharp I always use the work sharp sharpener for these and when I come through there I'll pass it and I'll it's hard to maintain the point to keep it down to a point on those but I'll come through there and I'll roll my wrist and put that rounded edge on the tip and get that sucker super sharp for working stuff in but when I'm taking all the junk off of this back leg I'll just use this but when I get into taking fat and stuff off that I don't want I'll go to my fillet knife but look here get in here stinker so you can grab a hold and you can see it's like a protective layer it's just what I call it that hides all the meat here what's that that's why I put them there so we have some freaking light dude you get that protective layer Mitch. you look at that this is super thin it might look thick looking at it from there but that's only you're not here come over here stink come over here and look at this see pulling that up here watch out now you got to be mobile and remember if you take too much meat and you want to get that take your fillet knife and fillet it off but that's super thin so we're going to give that to some some critter to eat in the cold come in there get that junky piece out of there junk See? Now that backside's pretty much ready. We'll, we'll give the leg the, the flop. And you can see, there's that roast. So before I do anything, I'll get off, come in here, and do what I can with the stuff that I don't want on. Because I don't have to get real specific with the fillet knife yet so I was just keep an assortment of knives handy but look there you can see the line just 
just stick your knife in there and cut it. Then you can come up in here, cut off that strip. And all this separates. You start putting your finger in there, you can see how it breaks down. See, I, I didn't even cut that. There's where I cut. But look at that. You can see that. See, there's another line where that muscle ends. You can stick your knife in there and follow that around. It's all pretty easy. And you can make whatever you want out of all this. Some guys might take this big old slab here and cut steaks. But we've got plenty of everything else. Except jerky. And Vesper wants her some jerky. And like this, I, I could take this whole chunk of meat off, but just to make it easy, I'm going to shove my knife in there and cut up. <sighs> just to get the meat out. Get it out. And there's a chunk. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And we're going to just slice it into chunks and throw it in the bowl. And tomorrow we'll grind it. Here, Vesper, look. It's like you get that chunk of meat out, there's going to be layers of different chunky fats. And you can just kind of pull them out. Cut the junk out of there. And voila. All right, <laughs> there's the roast. This is so easy, dudes. <clears throat> There's the roast, the leg bone's right there. So look, your roast will end about right there. Cut around there like that. Here, we'll do her down here. You can put your knife along the bone. Just follow it. You can do it blind. Voila. If you were super good, I bet dad could do it blind. Well, if you do so many, anybody can do it. There's your roast. People you can, like you, can, you can cut a couple chunks of fat off of there if you don't want that. But normally, I'll just m cut off this minor stuff. There's your roast. You can set that sucker in the crock pot with some water and carrots and onions and whatever else you want. Peas. But we're just going to wrap this up. Good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's that other side we cleaned up. Now look. Here's another, here's another slab that just separates itself. Now look, for this side, you can come in here and follow that to the bone. Follow that up. It's all contoured by the bone. There's another big slab we get to clean up. Now you can go back. See, so we're getting in here towards the bone. Best person, look at that. Wow. See, there's a little bit of a bloody mess there. This is all good meat. And here's a big old chunk. You can do some trimming. You're always gonna need to do trimming. Like, look at that. You could slab that on the grill with a steak, but it's gonna be jerky. Now up top here, there's a big old chunk along here. It's all about a feel thing. You gotta get your hands in there and do the work and you can do it. Don't be just afraid. Like doing, just like shooting a bow without a sight. Takes a little work, but when it all comes together and you make it happen, it's rewarding. Because nobody else is going to put that arrow in there for you. You got to do it. And like there's just lots of little chunks you could cut out. All good grinding meat. So you can go back. It's self-explanatory. Look. 
You can go back. These are all minor little pieces. We'll cut off like that chunk. There's another little piece. We'll cut these off. And then that's it. Front legs, when you shoot them, they can get a little bit bloody. But Vesper didn't shoot the shoulders. But the blood on the inside of the hide, when it's trying to squirt out the hole, you know, it gets stuck in between the ribs and the hide, and you get all this blood. So just have you a towel ready. So look, front legs are the same. You grab a hold of that stuff, see you start cutting it back. It's like a little protective layer over that. That's just what I call it. Yours. I ain't gonna give you any scientific names. You already stuff. said that you call it that. You making fun of me? No. Huh? No. Huh? I put you on these deer stinker. You better watch it. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, just cut off that junk. Now look, see that line? Now look. I see it. The white Run line. Run your knife down that line on the other side of it. The white line. And you can see how the meat is puzzled in there. I'm just going to cut these slabs right off of that scapula that's, that some of you, like myself in the past, if you're a big time bow hunter, everybody's hit the shoulder. And Either you blow through it, or you don't. 29%. We don't need to go into FOC and broadheads and all that, but big buck shoulders, that's a lot to get through, plus the rib cage to get in there. Everybody's, all the big timers have done it. And there's that scapula. Cut that meat off. See, imagine a big old buck. Got to go through the hide. That big old slab, if it was a real big buck, which even my arrows at 50 pounds, I sh shoot them through there with the severs and the, the slick trick mags. Go through the hide, all that meat, through that shoulder, through the rib cage, into the pumper or the pump station, the plumbing area, and then we drag him out, don't we? Yeah, then we drag him out. But these front legs are pretty simple. On that back side where all that blood is, that blood clot stuff. I'll just come in there and whack that off of there. Put her in a scrap bucket. Scapula meat. Go down there by the elbow. Cut in. Come up, follow the bone. There's another big old slab. You can save your shanks, and there's meat right there. You cut in. We're grinding all this. A lot of this, this fat that looks, I'll just cut that off there so you can see it better. Better. Normally, I just grind that. It don't give your deer meat a bad taste or a gamey taste. It's just there. I've done a little bit of everything, and all of our meat tastes great, don't it, Stink? Yeah. So, that's the basic breakdown of the front leg. You can go through, I'm gonna cut off these shanks and stuff, save all that meat. Uh, I'll see ya. We'll, we'll end it with wrapping here. We'll wrap up a few things. You good with that, Stinker? Yep. Here's our big bowl of meat. Wow. That's normal size for, a, a, say, a medium-sized deer for here. Sometimes I'll cut the roasts up, but we're going to save them. This will all be jerky. I'm going to cover that up. We'll refrigerate it till tomorrow. Here's our back straps and stuff. So I got me a little tub. And guys, I'm a cheapskate. This is the cheapest painter's tape at Menards. I don't know where I got that. This is what I use. Don't buy freezer tape. It's a pain in the ass, and this stuff works better. Been doing it for years. 
it's just, it's not an idea. I don't have ideas. I just go with factual things. There's a full back strap. I'll wrap both of them. Give me a little rag here. I always, sometimes you can come up here and do a fold like that. Mm -hmm. And then fold her down. Or I'll just come in, you grab them. Grab them and just roll her up. Fruit roll up, stinker. Yeah. A meat roll up. Then wrap your ends just like a Christmas present. Yep. It's like you're wrapping a Christmas present. Now, some of you butchers, if you're a professional butcher and you're watching this, you might say, I don't know what I'm doing. But this gets the job done, and it's got the job done for 39 years. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. I don't know all the, the, the professional butcher wrapping methods. And I'll tell you why I don't know them. It's because I don't know them. So, like, here, I'll do a roast. One roast. One roast. Cover that puppy up. And another reason why I don't need to know them is because I'm not butchering for other people. See? I wrap this. It's mine. I'll unwrap it, then I'll eat it. So why do you wrap it? Well, you got to protect it with this freezer paper stink. Because we might be, like, we might eat this roast in August of this year. It'll be hot and we'll, and you might not even be thinking about deer hunting. But then I'll be thinking like, man, where can I go set up some stands to shoot chubs at? <laughs> or maybe by then we might not even have any private spots left. And then we'll have to just hunt all public, which I know a couple good public spots and I guarantee you I'm gonna be there. I'm real excited for next year. And I'm coming because there's no other spot to hunt except back here. You're coming with me? Uh-huh. You gonna do some public landing? Yeah. Alright, that's pretty much it. Here, I'll just show you what I do for back straps. Come here. There's, dun, dun, there's a full back strap. I'll just write BS22. There's a roast. Dot. Roast, just somewhere. It don't even matter. Just Roast, 22. The year 22, it's a roast. BS, 22. Back strap. Yep. Well, that pretty much does it. All we got left to do is to cover that. We'll grind it tomorrow. And I'll get rid of all the scraps. I'll scatter them back here. The critters will come eat on them tonight. And they'll be happy out in the cold, won't they? Mm-hmm. We'll see you later.